Hello everyone, I'm Bill from Alt Roll. I have a D&D &D question for you. Do you like killing monsters? Well, of course you do. Combat is an essential part of the game. And within combat, you need to be able to do damage to your enemies. However, the rules of D&D &D state that before you're able to damage an enemy, you have to roll a dice to hit them, known as an attack roll. Any roll of the dice brings with it random chance, and one way to represent your ability to hit an enemy is by calculating a percentage chance to hit, something that you might see a lot in video games like XCOM or Baldur's Gate 3. This percent chance number makes it a hell of a lot easier to know when an attack is likely to hit or likely to miss, which can impact the decisions you make in combat. But how do you get this number? What modifiers and mechanics can help or hurt this chance to hit? And how useful is it for players and game masters to know how to do? Well, these are the questions that we're going to answer in today's video where we look at the math behind combat in D&D. So let's start off with some basics to ease us into it. Today we are going to learn about Percentages. First up, this is a 20-sided die, also known as a d20. This is what we need to roll to try and hit an enemy with a weapon or spell attack. Because there are 20 numbers in total, and you can only ever roll one number per dice roll, that means every single face of a d20 has a 1 in 20 chance of being rolled. Represented as a percentage, your chance to roll any specific number on a d20 is 5%. So, assuming there are no factors at play other than random chance, you have just as much chance to roll a natural 20 as you do a natural 1. When it comes to combat, a successful weapon or spell attack roll needs to meet or beat the enemy's armor class to succeed. So long as you know a target's armor class, you can work out what numbers you need to roll to hit them. If you add up the percent to hit for each number you need to roll, then you will be able to calculate your percentage chance to hit for that specific monster. For example, this hobgoblin has an armor class of 18 due to wearing chainmail and wielding a shield. To hit a hobgoblin, you'd have to roll an 18, a 19, or a natural 20. If each dice roll has a 5% chance of happening, and there are three total rolls that result in a hit, 5 plus 5 plus 5 will equal 15. Thus, you have a 15% chance of hitting a hobgoblin with an armor class of 18. But Bill, I hear you type in the comments, what about modifiers? Well, I'm glad you asked. When you roll an attack, you don't rely on just your dice roll. In D&D, we have certain modifiers we add to or subtract from our attack roll. These modifiers are called our attack bonus for weapon attacks, or our spell attack bonus for spell attacks. To calculate your attack bonus, take the relevant ability score modifier for the weapon you are using. Strength for melee, dexterity for ranged, and a choice of strength or dexterity for finesse weapons. Then, if you are proficient with the weapon, add your proficiency bonus on top of the ability score. To calculate your spell attack bonus, you take your spellcasting ability modifier, which is dependent on what spellcasting class you are, and then add your proficiency bonus on top of that modifier. Spellcasters are always proficient in spellcasting. Once you have these modifiers calculated, you'll be adding them to your attack rolls to, hopefully, improve your odds of hitting the target. But how much do these modifiers help or hurt your chance to hit an enemy? The answer is actually quite a lot. Because every number on the d20 represents a 5% chance, 
Every additional point added or subtracted by modifiers changes your chance to hit by an additional 5%. So, a plus one modifier increases your chance to hit by 5%, and a minus one modifier decreases your chance to hit by 5%. Let's look at that same example from before, but add in modifiers to see how that affects our ability to kill that hobgoblin. As a reminder, that hobgoblin has an armor class of 18, which means we need to roll a number that, along with our modifiers, gives us a number of 18 or higher. Let's assume that we're a level 1 character with a plus 2 proficiency bonus and a plus 3 ability score modifier. Using a weapon we're proficient with, or spell, we'd have a plus 5 attack modifier. If we subtract our attack bonus from the armor class of the enemy, we can figure out the least possible number we can roll and still be able to hit the hobgoblin. In this case, 18 armor class minus 5 attack bonus equals 13. So, with a plus 5 attack modifier, we need to roll a 13 or higher to hit the hobgoblin. If each number is 5%, that means we have a 40% chance to hit the hobgoblin, which is much better than the 15% chance from before. So, we've looked at the base math of rolls and the math with modifiers, but there's one more mechanic that impacts our ability to hit an enemy in D&D. Advantage and disadvantage. As we went through earlier, any dice roll has an independent 5% chance to be rolled. However, rolling with advantage or disadvantage has us roll two dice and ignore one of the results. Fair warning, this is where the math is going to get a little trickier. But don't worry, I'm going to try to use some visual aids to help us all out. Let's first take a look at advantage to get an idea of what we're working with. When we look at the total combination of numbers that you can roll between two d20s, that number is 20 squared, which comes out to 400 combinations. When we look at any specific number that we might want to roll with advantage, we can take the number of combinations we can get to roll that number and divide that by the total amount of combinations possible to get our percentage chance to roll that number with advantage. In order to roll a 1 with advantage, we'd have to roll a 1 on both dice, leaving only one way to roll a 1 with advantage. So, if we take one way to roll a 1 with advantage, divided by 400 total possible dice combinations, our odds of rolling a 1 with advantage comes out to 0.0025, or 0.25%. To roll a 2 with advantage, we could roll a 2 on dice A and a 1 on dice B, a 1 on dice A and a 2 on dice B, or a 2 on both dice A and B, leaving three total ways to roll a 2 with advantage. Dividing 3 by 400, our odds of rolling a 2 with advantage come out to 0.75%, exactly 0.5% higher than our odds of rolling a 1 with advantage. If a headache is already setting in, don't worry, because I'm going to save us all some time. If we did this for every single number between 1 and 20, the trend of percent chance increasing by 0.5% per number continues upwards in a linear fashion, and peaks at 20 with 9.75%, as seen on this chart. One of the great things about math is that this trend is the same for disadvantage, but inverted, so that our chance to roll a nat 1 with disadvantage is 9.75%, and our chance to roll a nat 20 with disadvantage is 0.25%, as seen on this chart. So, using these charts, we can find out our percentages for rolling that exact number 
if we have advantage or disadvantage. But in D&D combat, we need to meet or beat a certain number to hit an enemy, meaning we need to roll at least a certain number in order to hit. To calculate a minimum number needed, we would just add up the percentages to roll these specific numbers based on the number we need. Using our hobgoblin from earlier, if we needed to roll a 13 or higher, but we're rolling with advantage, we'd start with 6.25% and then add 6.75, 7.25, 7.75, and so on and so forth, all the way up to 20. This total comes out to 64%. So, our chances of rolling a 13 or higher with advantage is 64%. Now, I'm not going to make us go through every single number here manually. Instead, I have a handy dandy chart that you can look at here which shows our percent chance to roll a specific number or higher based on whether we're rolling normally, rolling with advantage, or rolling with disadvantage. The top percentages show our chances with advantage, the middle percentages show our chances on a normal roll, and the lower percentages show our chances with disadvantage. What this all means is that the bonus or penalty we get from advantage and disadvantage respectively are going to be greater if our target number is between 8 and 14. But as we get lower or higher than those target numbers, the potential benefit and penalty get lower. So now that I've gone through basic dice probability, how modifiers can increase or decrease that probability, and how advantage and disadvantage have a significant impact on this probability, we're left with one final question. Why the hell would we ever need all of this information? Well, unfortunately, if you're just a player, you'll likely never need to do any of this. Players won't know the armor classes of the monsters they're facing unless they're metagaming. So trying to calculate an accurate percentage chance during gameplay is kind of pointless. Dungeon Masters, on the other hand, can benefit from this information a lot, as they will know not only the monster's armor classes, but the player character's armor classes. As we state in our Dungeon Master courses on the Discord and in some of our other videos, combat balancing in 5th edition is largely a guessing game, as it's based on the sometimes inaccurate challenge ratings assigned to monster stat blocks. Using chance to hit as one of the factors for combat balancing, it's going to be a lot easier to approximate how often the monsters will hit the players in combat, how often the players will hit the monsters in combat, and how these two approximations compare to one another to generally gauge how tough a fight is going to be for the party. Now, I will add on this caveat that you do not have to do this to calculate approximate hit values for monsters or players if you don't want to, especially if you're the type of person who struggles with math and statistics. But if you do, I think this is a very beneficial thing to know about moving forward. So now that we understand how chance to hit works in D&D combat, combat balancing will hopefully be a little easier for newer game masters moving forward. I know for me personally, examining how this math works behind the scenes is always going to be interesting, just because I'm kind of a nerd like that. But I want to know how you all feel about it. Does understanding the chance to hit in D&D make combat easier to plan for you? Do you just like learning about how all the mechanics work behind the scenes? Or do you think this is all just extra fluff that people don't really need to understand to have fun in D&D? You can go ahead and let me know down in the comments. If you want to learn more about D&D, you can subscribe to the channel or check out our description for the link to our Discord server. On the Discord, you can check out our live courses that teach all the basics of D&D, and if you like what we do here, you can support us financially with a one-time or recurring donation on our Ko-fi page. However, that's all I had today, folks. 
Thank you all for watching. Make sure to have a great rest of your day, and I'll see all of you next time.